Okay, so welcome to this next video in which we are discussing thrombosis and antithrombotic drugs. Okay, so we are uh, midway through uh, discussing the antithrombotic effects of aspirin. Okay, so we are looking at the process by which platelets synthesize thromboxane A2. Okay, so we've discussed that in the process of activating platelets, what will happen is you will activate phospholipase A2, and it will start breaking down phospholipids into uh, two molecules, okay? So the fatty acid that is usually bound to, uh, in the second position of the glycerol molecule of a phospholipid, is known as arachidonic acid. Okay, and arachidonic acid is often abbreviated to AA for short. So arachidonic acid, or AA. Now, uh, this other molecule that we're left over with here, this is known as lysophosphatidate. Okay, and that name makes sense if we remember that the old name for a phospholipid molecule uh, which is what we started with, is a phosphatidate molecule. So this up here is known as phosphatidate. So the modern name for this may well be a phospholipid, but the old name for a phospholipid is a phosphatidate molecule. Okay, so phospholipid is equal to phosphatidate. Okay, right. So we have broken down our phosphatidate molecules into arachidonic acid and lysophosphatidate. Now, what's going to happen is that inside the platelets, arachidonic acid is going to be used to make thromboxane A2. So what's first going to happen is that an enzyme known as cyclooxygenase is going to act on arachidonic acid. So, uh, cyclooxygenase enzymes catalyze two reactions of arachidonic acid. They firstly catalyze the conversion of arachidonic acid into something known as prostaglandin G2, okay, often abbreviated to PGG2. Okay, so this is prostaglandin G2. And then they also convert it into prostaglandin H2. And I'm not sure I like that uh, dash there, so I think I'll get rid of that. PGH2. Don't know if that's supposed to be there. Okay. Um, so this is prostaglandin H2. Okay, right. So both of these reactions are catalyzed by um, an enzyme known as cyclooxygenase. Now, this first reaction, where you convert arachidonic acid into prostaglandin G2, this is what's known as the cyclooxygenase reaction. Cyclooxygenase reaction. Whilst the second reaction, where you convert prostaglandin G2 into prostaglandin H2, this is known as the peroxidase reaction. So both the cyclooxygenase and the peroxidase reaction are both catalyzed by the enzyme cyclooxygenase. So let me put that here. So this is catalyzed by cyclooxygenase. Okay, now there are two isoforms of cyclooxygenase. And by the way, cyclooxygenase is often abbreviated to COX for short, cyclo, and then ox for oxygenase. Right, so there are two major forms of cyclooxygenase in the body. Potentially, there are actually three forms, um, but the third is still debatable, okay? Um, but there's certainly two forms, and these two forms are known as COX-1, or cyclooxygenase-1, and cyclooxygenase-2. Now, the form of cyclooxygenase that is f important within platelets is the cyclooxygenase-1. So, in the platelets, you have a lot of this cyclooxygenase 1 enzyme, okay? And the cyclooxygenase 1 enzyme converts the arachidonic acid first to prostaglandin G2 and then into prostaglandin H2. And then prostaglandin H2 is going to be converted into thromboxane A2, okay? And it will be converted into thromboxane A2 by the enzyme from boxane A2 synthase. Okay, and the enzyme, as I say, which catalyzes this conversion is known as from boxane 
or TXA2 uh, synthase. Okay, right. So, how does aspirin work? How does it stop? Whoops, goodness, what's happened there? Sorry about that smudging. Um, how does aspirin stop the production of thromboxane A2? Which portion of this pathway does it stop? Well, it's this path part here. The, it inhibits cyclooxygenase enzymes. Specifically, it's actually well, it's actually a non-selective inhibitor of cyclooxygenase. But the form of cyclooxygenase, which is in platelets, is COX-1. So aspirin is a non-selective inhibitor of cyclooxygenase enzymes. And it is a permanent inhibitor. It goes into these enzymes and makes a permanent modification to the active site of these enzymes that prevents them from catalyzing this reaction permanently. Now, why is that so significant? Well, platelets have no nucleus. So if you imagine dousing a platelet in aspirin, the aspirin will permanently inhibit all of the cyclooxygenase 1 enzymes within this platelet. So let's draw these here. So here's one, here's two, etc. So the aspirin has inhibited all of them. So you've doused it in aspirin. Loads of aspirin molecules have gone in. And one aspirin molecule has gone into each one. And all of them are permanently taken out, basically. None of them are functional. But the as platelet doesn't have a nucleus. Now, what would any other cell do if some enzyme had been permanently um, destroyed or permanently inactivated? Uh, what well, would just make more, but the plate that can't do that because to make more you have to have DNA, and the plate that doesn't have any DNA, uh, it doesn't have a nucleus. Okay, so it can't make more cyclooxygenase is basically the problem. So it permanently stops these platelets from being able to synthesize from boxane A2. Now. Thromboxane A2 was utterly essential for causing the vasoconstriction and also for causing the activation of the GP2B slash 3A protein so that platelets can become sticky. And without it, you're going to inhibit the hemostatic pathway, basically. So if you give aspirin to someone on a regular basis, and this drug is taken continuously, it's taken orally, it's taken daily usually, um, and it will continuously be inhibiting the new platelets which have been formed, stopping them from uh, having any sort of active cyclooxygenase 1 enzymes and stopping them from being able to produce from boxane A2. And if they can't produce from boxane A2, as I say, you can't get um, the first and second components of hemostasis. So you can still get coagulation. Aspirin isn't going to stop coagulation. Uh, but if the fibrin doesn't have any platelets to intertwine, then you're not going to form a thrombus, basically. So this is a powerful antithrombotic drug. Okay, right. So we'll call it there for this video and continue our discussion in the next video.